All right, we are live. Hey guys, this is attempt number two. I had some connection issues, so we'll see if this sorts itself out. Um, I wanna share with you guys how I shoot film at weddings and what my film photography setup looks like and more. So if you are joining me live, go ahead, drop your name, say hello, welcome to our live chat. And if you're watching in the replay, go ahead and message me and let me know that um, you've, you've been able to see the replay because we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. Okay, so the first thing I want to share with you guys is my la well my, fam my film collection. So um, let's start with this guy. So I have a couple of different cameras and I'll tell you which ones I've used at weddings and which ones I haven't. So hmm, let me see. Yeah, let's start with this guy. So this is a hi. Carissa from California, welcome Carissa. I'm so excited that you're here and that you're able to see this. I know we're having some like weird delays and stuff like that, so um, thank you guys for bearing with me. Okay, so this guy is the Kodak Duoflex 2. This is a medium format camera, and it was actually a gift from somebody, um, one of my friends in high school, and it opens like this. So it's a medium format camera, and it basically spools like top to bottom, and there are metal spools in here, and I actually have processed film through this camera a couple of times um, and it is super like finicky so it like leaks a little bit of light sometimes in the body but it creates some really cool stuff so I've done some black and white film so I do medium format in here so this takes a I think a modified 120 roll which is really cool so um, this is very interesting one of the cool things that you can do with this is TTVs so through the viewfinder so what you can do is you can actually see like what it sees in the top by looking down so this is your viewfinder <laughs> someone's calling me Bridget Medler Catherine it's it's true I, I definitely get that a lot um, but this is like one of the cool things about this camera that I originally liked is you can actually like see what the viewfinder sees from the top and a lot of people actually use this to create a picture in and of itself so they'll take a camera and they'll shoot down and take a picture of the scene digitally of what you can see in here so if you guys like search TTV photographs you'll be amazed they're actually really incredible so check it out sometime it's really really cool um okay next camera i want to show you guys is um this lamography fisheye so this is really little it weighs like two ounces it takes 35 millimeter film and i have run film through this camera i got it when i was in high school this is one of the fisheye pictures yes that is my husband and i when we were babies and yeah, so it gives a really cool effect. I have run red scale film through this too. So you can do weird like colored films and really cool stuff because it's just like a point and shoot. There's nothing to set. There's nothing to figure out. Like it's really just like so fun to go through it and just kind of like go through and shoot the film. So I've gotten all my stuff developed through either the find lab or the dark room dark room is really good too um, and they can do kind of some customizations with like pushing and pulling your exposures and stuff like that so um, I highly recommend those labs one really cool camera that I've gotten recently is this guy this is a Polaroid land camera it opens and closes I'll show you with this like accordion texture and I have to push down this little button and it kind of just like springs in and out so it's really cool, it stores flat and then this guy kind of comes down and then it goes into a box. Um, but when you're open and you're ready to shoot, it goes like this and it is really, really cool. I've actually put film through this and taken pictures and they're, re they're really, really interesting because they don't work like a Polaroid camera like you might see in a movie or something. They actually pull apart and you have to time out your exposure. So depending on the temperature of where you took the picture, I know it's crazy, um, you actually expose it. So this is really cool. Like you can set the timer on the back. So I, it helps you to like keep track and then you start it and you can hear it and it goes. <laughs> So it helps you keep track of your exposure and there are these two pins that you push back and forth that have like focus, focusing capabilities. So you can play with the exposure, you can play with the focus and you can play with um, like dragging the exposure and stuff like that. So you can get some really blurry, like really cool stuff. So I found this um, Cherith, I bought this on, I wanna say like 
eBay or Etsy. It might have been Etsy in like the vintage section, um, but I saw another creative play around with one of these and you can take amazing photos. Like I wanna see if I have an example propped up around here. I might have to make a blog post about this, but they make these square prints. I know I have a picture somewhere in this office that I took. Um, but they come with like a white frame and then when you pull the picture apart there's a negative and then there's like your print so it has all the developing like formula inside of the film and it's pretty crazy so this is such a fun like just a play around camera for me so I haven't used this on any like paid shoots um, but it is super fun to play around with. Um, all right, so Catherine asked, um, I love old cameras, where did you get them from? Yeah, so I've gotten, this was a gift. This was an old like estate sale, like vintage find, I think. Um, this came from Urban Outfitters. So the fisheye came from Urban Outfitters and the big Polaroid land camera, I wanna say was either eBay or Etsy. Um, so those ones are really great. I also have a little tiny like film Polaroid camera and this creates the little like credit card size Polaroids which are really fun for like family vacations and stuff like that. It just opens in the back and um, then you can like play around with your exposure settings on the top. So this will tell you like if it's really bright or if you're inside basically how much flash to use. So this is another fun one. As far as film cameras that I have actually used at weddings gosh this like is not great quality guys i'm sorry um i think that just got better okay so as far as film cameras that i've actually used at a wedding i have a fujika az1 so this is just a 35 millimeter camera i think it might even have film in it right now it feels really heavy <laughs> Um, this is all manual and the lenses are all manual as well So I found this at like a used sale when I was at a curriculum like a book fair and One of the vendors had a table of books and they were like, oh if you're interested in photography I have cameras available as well. And so I was like, yes, and so I bought a whole bunch of these um, really old lenses and cameras from this guy and they just sort of like screw off they're really old like the lens mounts are old and um oh that looks weird with my eye <laughs> but yeah this has been this was kind of my intro to film i think this was my first film camera that i ever purchased um so i run 35 millimeter film through this guy and i'll show you the films that i use i have a 35 millimeter black and white film by kodak so oh this isn't it it doesn't matter whatever i have um ilford 3200 film so it's like really grainy and beautiful and then I have some Portra 400 and then as you can see we have a whole bunch more here um, and these are basically the films that I use if I'm going to be shooting obviously 35 millimeter but more so like at a styled shoot or, or a wedding so this is the camera that I actually shoot on most at weddings um, other than of course my digital camera. So if I'm going to be shooting film, I'll be using uh, this Nikon. So this is the F100 and this has some really cool like automation and um, different modes. So I can use like fully manual or P or A or whatever and then I can set the ISO like on the top. So um, I love that it's set up exactly like the digital series from Nikon. So I love that it's the same mount, so it's F mounts. So I can use all of my Nikon lenses that I have for my DSLR on here. And for the most part, they react very similarly. Um, and I do have some 400 uh, film in here. I don't know if you can see like in this window, I do have some film in here currently. Let me see. Okay, I need to charge it. <laughs> And it says I have one exposure left. So I need to send this in. Um, I think I was trying to finish out this roll before I switch over to black and white. So what I wanted to say um, most importantly is that when I shoot on this camera at a wedding, I'm normally shooting in black and white film so that I can kind of complement what I'm taking in digital. So I do shoot digitally. I am a digital wedding photographer, but I like to shoot film when I can and to really complement it and make it so that I don't have to go full on hybrid and match every single color tone and that kind of thing. I like to stick to black and white in film and then I have the option of you know, whatever I want to do with my digital exposures, I can make those black and white or I can make them color. 
So I think that kind of complements really beautifully. So these are, I think, all my film cameras for now. I think I have like a couple more, but they're not cameras that I use. They're just like on a shelf somewhere. Um, but I wanted to show you guys cameras that I had processed film through. So I processed film through all of these in the past and have had really, really cool results with them. And I've played around with like double exposures and pu pushing and pulling film. And this camera, I've developed my own film. So I went into a lab and used an enlarger and got negatives and um, developed my own negatives and then, well, developed like the film to be negatives and then developed the prints. So it was a really, really cool experience. Let's see, um, Carissa asks, where do you get your film developed? I have used a variety of labs. I most like the Find Lab and I've used the Dark Room. So the Dark Room was really great. I shot a 120 film through the Dark Room, I, this guy, and this is a really old camera. So when you shoot the film, you load it here, so like in the top, and then it transfers down onto this pin at the bottom. Well, onto this guy. And when this swings out, and then this comes off and ends up being like your images are on here, but it's not disposable. So you need to have a lab that will send it back to you and understands like old, original Kodak 120, like medium format cameras. Um, so this is really cool because I'm able to get the film through and then I need a lab that is gonna send it back. So this was kind of a fun little find and um, the find lab has done a good job developing all of my film. So I'm curious to hear from you guys. Have you guys photographed anything using film? Do you wanna shoot film? And do you have any questions about film? Um, Carissa, you're welcome. Um, so I'm, I'm just curious, cause I love film. I've always loved film. I feel like it has such a different quality. The Polaroid aspect is really fun. Um, 35 millimeter medium format, it's all really fun. I think next I'm going to get a another medium format camera, maybe like in the contacts family or something kind of similar. Um, the only thing is they're getting so trendy and so expensive now. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Cause I, I'm sure at some point I could find one at like an estate sale or something like that. Um, but. Anyway, I thought this would be a fun way to hop on this week without filming a pre-filmed video for you guys because again, I've been out of town for about a week and I'm just getting back into the swing of things. So I'm gonna make this video available for replay for about a day and then it's gonna be put on archive for my mailing list. So if you're on my mailing list, you will have access to a lot of my live streams that everyone else doesn't um, just so I can keep my regular feed uh, pre-filmed videos and that kind of thing. Um, but I, this is just such a fun way to like hang out with you guys. Um, let's see, Catherine said I would, let's see. The only time when I used film was when I was a kid and it was Kodak disposable. Yeah, so that's like what I grew up on was like the disposable Kodak, like, and you can do so much stuff with that. Um, I'm assuming that was like maybe I like ISO 100 film or 100 speed film as they would say, um, but so cool. I think like film photography is such like a lost art because one of the beauties of film and back in the day when we did shoot film was that like there was this automatic printing of your images and now we don't have that. Like it's not a given that you're gonna print your images. So I think it's such a cool thing when you shoot film to like get your stuff back and like have physical prints of it. Um, let's see, Charit says, I'd love to shoot film, but I have to be honest, it's a bit intimidating, especially considering I'm self-taught. By the way, I just started following you on Insta and you're so fun to follow. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're following me on Instagram. I was just on vacation, so it was probably more interesting than usual, but um, that's so cool. Um, I, think, I think you're right though about things like being overwhelming. I would say like start super simple. Like if you can get a camera and shoot on manual or um, or automatic, I mean, like you can you can start getting the feel for film and I think as you shoot, you understand it better. So like, if you wanna shoot film, I would say don't be on the fence, don't um, read too long about it, don't wait for it to feel like you're ready, I would just do it. I would get a light meter, like a really cheap little light meter and start playing around because it's so like 
it, it gets to be intuitive. It gets to make more sense when you start actually shooting it. And I think that's one of my goals for the end of this year, 2017, moving into 2017 is actually like shooting more films. So I might take you guys along on that journey and, and share more of that stuff. Uh, like my maybe like the film stocks I'm using whether or not I'm like exposing them for the speed that they're at or if I'm pushing or pulling so I'll take you guys on that journey if you care um, I know a lot of you are just digital shooters so it might not be interesting to you at all um, let's see travel with Nevin says um, it's always an amazing experience to shoot film but it's too scary yeah it's really scary I mean I am not to the point where I would ever shoot film for like a paid session only on film um, I would say you know shoot what you're comfortable with especially if it's a paid client um, and and you got to deliver what you promised but at the same time that's a great time to like shoot a few frames in digital and then go back in, or in film rather and then go back and say like what worked, what didn't, um, did we have good light? And, and I think that relationship with your lab as you start sending film consistently to a lab, they start to get to know what you're doing and they can give you feedback. They can say, you know, you're underexposing, you're overexposing, like they can really help you in that relationship. So I'd say the sooner that you can find a lab that you love and consistently send to the same lab, you'll have better results. Um, Catherine said it's a lost art and I want to get back into it now. Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, just having all these cameras around me and like seeing them over the years is like inspiring and I have lots of film pictures now just be from having them. So I feel like it's forced me to print more of my work just by default and also, um, it, it's interesting. It's a conversation starter for sure when you're on a shoot and you pull out like a land camera and someone goes, is that real? Does it take real pictures? And it's so funny because there's like this slot on the side and then you like pull the frame, like you pull the print out and hold it. And then you start this like fancy timer on the back and they're like, what is happening? So it's so fun. Just, it's just a new way to be an artist, but still be in the photography world. So I think it's pretty great. Um, Arvind from India, hi, welcome. I'm so glad you're here and that you're tuning in. Um, if you are not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And like I said, there's gonna be a replay for this, but um, I'm gonna take it down after like a day and I'm going to have my replays for my live streams in general, for the most part, only be available to my mailing list. So this will be one of them. Um, just cause I wanna give you guys something really special for being a part of my tribe and my community that other people don't get. So um, that's one way that I'd like to do that. Carissa says, I have a ton of old film cameras. She collects them, but I've never shot on them. This has inspired me to, yeah. Okay, so you need to shoot on any camera. Like you don't, and there's something so exciting about like buying an old camera or like having a vintage camera, running film through it and be, and you're taking pictures and you don't know if any of it's gonna come out. Like that might sound crazy, but it's fun and you don't know and it's fun. So one thing, if you're really trying to get better at film that I started and I learned from a film professor when I was in undergrad was to take notes while you're taking your pictures of like what your settings were. So the problem is when you get your stuff back, you're like, this doesn't really look good, but I don't remember what my settings were. So that's one thing I actually did for my first few roles is I like sat down and I actually took notes. Like I'm shooting at F10. I'm trying to get this like long exposure with the moon. I'm trying to do all this fun stuff. So like, if you're trying to get better at film and understand why your film is looking a certain way, you might have to take notes for the first couple of times. Otherwise, you're not gonna remember what your settings were because it's not like digital where it keeps everything there, right? So that's one thing I kind of learned the hard way. Like the first few rolls, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So I started taking notes and I think that really helped in the long run. Okay, so Travel with Nevin said, I'm gonna take out my old Kodak tomorrow and see what I get. I am so excited that you guys are doing this. If any of you start shooting film and run, even like disposable cameras, like the kind that are like at weddings and stuff, like sh show me, tag me, send me an email. I wanna see what you guys are creating as far as film, like what you know film stocks you're using, what labs you're using. I wanna um, be along this journey with you because I think it's so fun and I think it's more exciting when you do it with someone. So please let me know, please tag me. I'm at Joy Michelle on um, Instagram. So if you guys get any prints back or anything, I would love to see them. All right, guys. So 
what are your questions? Let's see, Arvind asked something. Joy, since you're a Nikon shooter, what's your expectations from Nikon on the 100th anniversary this month's lens? A new full frame or mirrorless? So like, I don't know what you're asking, exactly. Like, am I, which, which of those am I expecting? I don't know, honestly. I mean, I think that like, it would be awesome if they came out with some new stuff. It would also be awesome if they would just like sponsor me and send me things to try. <laughs> shameless plug um but I don't know I I don't I'm not really like in super tune with what every one of these companies are doing all the time just because I don't believe in buying like the newest best like most exciting product or electronic as soon as it comes out because you will never pay a higher premium than when something comes out what I like to do is like wait a year or two when the technology is like developing and then they can decide whether or not it has defects and also of course it's a lot cheaper so I am in the market for a new camera so what I might do is wait until Nikon launches their next full frame and then I'll just go to the next level so I don't know I think it'd be really cool if Nikon did some mirrorless stuff um, I think Nikon needs to like possibly explore expanding their aperture abilities um, because that's one thing that Canon has that I'm like so jealous of you guys for if you if any of you shoot Canon um, I guess what else? I don't know. I love the, the 58 millimeter. So something in like the portrait world, um, that around like the 58, 85 millimeter, I feel like Nikon is like killing it in those. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think travel with Nevin just sent me a super chat. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I think that's like one of my first super chats. I don't even know like how much money that is, but I completely appreciate it. And, um, I'm like speechless. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. I tell me what you think Nevin of like what's going to happen. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't keep up with like Nikon's like the newest, the latest, the greatest, but I do know it's like been a while, right? Like it's been a while since they launched something. So I know there's years sometimes where like one, so Canon will come out with like a bunch of stuff or Sony will come out with a bunch of stuff and, and then Nikon catches up. I don't know. It, that's a really good question, but thank you so much for saying that I deserve it. That's really awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. Cherith is like, that's cool. Uh, so cool. I'm super blown away by your generosity. All right, how do you use light modifiers, soft boxes, or blue beauty dishes? Um, would be great. So your comments like disappear when they're over here. So I have my laptop. Um, yeah. So. That's a great question. I don't use tons of modifiers. I'm really simplistic in my setup. I try to keep it like simple, whatever I have to do to get the picture to look the way I want. I don't believe in like doing tons to, to change it. I mean, sometimes at receptions, you do have to kind of like go crazy and like add a million um, modifiers to make it look right just because the lighting can be so crazy with like fluorescence and a little bit of natural light and then pin lighting and then band lighting like it can be crazy um, the one thing I will say so uh, I did a little bit of modifier talk in my flash my off-camera flash video which I'm sure you've already seen um, and you're asking for more. Um, other than that, I, my little brother, who is also a YouTuber, um, if you wanna check him out, his channel is Josh Binder. Um, he got these really cool soft boxes that like Velcro to like anything. So I think I'm gonna be trying those next because at the, for the most part, I just use a diffuser on top of my strobe or a shoot through umbrella. I have a huge shoot through umbrella. I'm trying to look and see if it's like near me. I don't think it's close to me. Um, and that's like, you know, it's like three feet wide or something. It's not like massive. Like I've seen my, um, one of my second shooters has one that's like a literal, like five foot umbrella. It's crazy. Um, but for the most part, that's what I'm using for modifiers right now. I also use a video light and that has like a soft, like soft box covering. I want to say, I'm not exactly sure like what the terminology is, but just a diffuser. I think that's it, a diffuser. Um, so I use that frequently as well. Um, but if I start adding gels to my flashes or play around with any of like the mag mod, I don't know if any of you guys have heard of the brand mag mod, um, but they create some amazing modifiers for flash. So 
if you're looking for modifiers for flash check out magmod i might be investing and then creating a video for you guys so if you do all want to see stuff with like flash and modifiers and gels and like color stuff let me know i'll do it like give this video a thumbs up or something i don't know um let's see i shoot canon um but with a new camera but when a new camera comes out for Canon, I wait a year and then I purchase it if ne necessary. Catherine, that's so smart. Like that's exactly what I'm talking about. I feel like if you wait a few years, you can figure out like if it's still amazing. Sometimes they even work out kinks and then they come out with like the next generation. Um, and then, you know, you get to buy somebody's like refurbished or you can get new, um, but you just get a better deal in general. So. That's what I'm gonna do with my next camera body, I'm thinking. I don't think I would ever get like the newest, latest, greatest because another thing with pro series camera bodies is that a lot of times what they like increase and what they're so, so known for, like once you're in the pro family, once you're full frame and it has HD video and has so many capabilities like the built-in grip and all that, what's changing are so small, which like don't anybody like, <laughs> get mad at me for saying this but what's changing is like frames per second which can matter if you're photographing like a hummingbird but for the most part like the frames per second in the camera like one step lower is just as adequate for what you're shooting so it depends like if you're shooting like erupting volcanoes maybe you do need like 50 frames per second but for most of us like we could suitably use 12 so it just depends on what you need. So I would say like, don't get sucked into like the latest and the greatest because I mean, unless you have unlimited money, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother conversation. If you have unlimited money, then just like do whatever you want and then send all your old cameras to me. Um, okay. Travel with Nevin said, not much of generosity, just the money I got from a charity photo shoot last month, a way to give back to a community of photographers. Well, thank you so much for that super chat. That was incredible. I don't know if any of you guys heard, my dog was just like shook off and he scared me. Yeah, um, I, will, I will write that question down though about the modifiers because I think that would be really interesting and it would help me to like take the plunge and invest in some of these things, play with some of these things a little more um, and then get back to you. So a lot of times what happens is you guys request stuff and then it forces me to like do my homework and think about what I'm gonna say and it just makes me a better photographer. So I really feel like I'm like, you know, right, growing there with you guys and learning about this stuff with you guys. So I might just have to figure out flash and modifiers and um, that sort of thing, so. Let me know if that's something you all would like to learn. Okay, Nim Tom says, I missed the beginning, but yay film. I've been trying to implement it into my business, but I definitely need to research a bit more before diving in. So definitely go back and, and watch the beginning. I went through like all my film camera bodies. Like we had this guy, we had some medium format. Um, we have 35 millimeter talked about like which ones I have used at weddings and portrait sessions and which ones I haven't. Um, but I've moved, like I've put film through all of these, um, which can be a little expensive, but I love that you guys are so into this and, and are thinking about like doing a little bit of film too. Um, because I just think it's like, we got to keep it alive or eventually like you're not going to be able to find film anywhere. Um, all right, Travel with Nevin says, sorry, but I really need to go. See you later, keep inspiring. Bye, good night, sounds really late. I'll see you next time. Catherine says, I love all your videos, make more videos. I will, I definitely will. Um, I am li literally just writing down what you guys say. So like, if you wanna see a certain video, like voice that opinion, share. If you have a specific video that I've made that you love, that you want more along that same vein, like tell me, share it. Um, bring, tell your friends about my channel. I'm gonna be doing some special stuff when I get to 5,000 subscribers. I have some um, like secret video content that I'm going to be creating. I have some giveaways and some big stuff. So. Help me get to 5,000 and you will be excited about these videos because I'm like going all out, guys. It's gonna be great. Let me go down to these questions really quick. Okay, silly question, but is there a way you could, that we can email questions 
to you. I've been doing bridles and I have so many questions. I need a mentor. Cherith, you definitely can. Um, I am a little tiny bit limited this time of year with like weddings and portraits and um, it's wedding season here in Maryland. Um, so it, it can take me a little while to get back to you. I'll do my best to get back to you, but I will tell you the absolute best way to work one-on-one -on -one with me is a mentor coaching session. So if you go on my website and you want to do like one-on-one -on -one mentoring, that is something I offer. I offer it on Skype and on the phone and in person. So that's an option, but you can absolutely email me. My email is on my website. So I think, all my links are here on YouTube um, and you'll be able to get all of that. So I also send out weekly emails. So I have tips and tricks and behind the scenes for you guys every single week to your inbox. And if you ever have questions, you can always reply directly to one of those emails and it will come to me and I read all of your replies. Okay, can you do a behind the scenes of a couple shoot or a styled shoot? That is on the books. That is going to happen. Uh, last wedding, uh, I think two weeks ago or a little less than two weeks ago, I was live streaming it over on Instagram. So if you're following me on Instagram at Joy Michelle, it'll pop up. I think it has the same picture here on YouTube as it does on Instagram. Um, you can see my live videos. So be sure to follow me. That's where I do a lot of behind the scenes like engagement sessions or showing like how I'm prepping or like what I'm doing there. Um, other than that, I will be recording and like post processing and editing um, some behind the scenes if possible throughout the year. So I have like, uh, I don't know, like 15 more weddings for this year. I was just looking at my booking calendar um, throughout the rest of the summer and the fall and the winter. And so I will be able to hopefully piece together some stuff I also have a video coming that has some behind the scenes of me shooting from another videographer. So I work uh, alongside a team, like a super talented team, like pretty often actually, and they shot some footage of me, so I will be posting that as well. So that will be coming soon. I don't know when, um, just because they did it for me, like for a favor, so I'm not gonna like bother them about it, um, but I'm assuming in like a few weeks, maybe a month or so. Um, I will have more behind the scenes at like real events and weddings. So hopefully that will give you some more insight. Um, can you tell me if I was shooting, if I had an assistant come behind the scenes and if I had them follow me, what would you want to see like specifically? Would you want to be seeing like camera settings? Would you want to be seeing like me just working in general? And then I would like show you guys the pictures that like the end product, like give me some insight so I can make that happen for you because I think that would be so cool to do. I just don't know exactly what would be most valuable for you guys. So let me know what you'd like to see live. Okay. Everyone here in Houston is so busy and not really interested in mentoring. What are your thoughts? So I would say like find a mentor somewhere else. Like it, you, they can be over like the phone. They can be on like a Slack hangout chat type thing, um, Skype, like don't even another country. Like there are so many talented business owners and photographers. I think it can actually help to get out of your market. Like you don't want to learn all the tips and tricks of like the guy who's living right next to you because then it's just going to be his, his stuff. And it's already kind of there. You want to learn like somebody that's like out of your time zone, out of your market who can bring some like fresh life into your business and get some insight and say, you know, what's happening here. Love this, change this, fix this. Like, I think so. I would look outside of your Houston market for sure. All right. Joy, can you start an episode of photo assignments, like an assignment every month so everyone can pose their photos and you can do a review and discuss about it monthly? That would be super cool. I'm going to take a screenshot of that because that's kind of genius. I can definitely do that. That could be something that maybe we do on the newsletter. So like the email newsletter, and then you guys can like send your submissions back. Um, I've also been thinking about starting a Facebook group, um, something that's like totally private for you guys that every week we can do live streams and some, maybe some photo review and I can also show you, show you guys behind the scenes at weddings. So that's something that's in the works, like in the very near future. It might even be in like my next newsletter to you guys. So if you're not on my email list, get on it because there's some exciting stuff coming. I'm excited that you're excited about the Facebook group idea. Awesome. So we have one member. <laughs> Nim Tom said in regards to like what you'd want to see behind the scenes. 
um, how do you pose, adjust to different lighting situations, and camera settings. Okay, I could do that for sure. Um, when I get the footage back from the video guys from my last wedding, I'm going to see if I can like superimpose the final shots with my EXIF data so you can see the settings because I think that'd be kind of cool because I think it's so funny to see like the behind the scenes like real life and then the picture that was taken because it never looks like the real life situation. All right, we have two members in the Facebook group. Catherine said she would totally join. All right, um, the steps, okay, yeah. Let me see, what else did you say? The steps for how you're posing, examples if you start with wide shots and then you move closer for detail shots, camera settings, Catherine also said camera settings and how you pose and what you shoot with for your live videos. Okay, I will do that. That's what we're gonna do. So I have that in the works and I will hopefully be able to get some of that to you um, in the next month or so. So stay tuned. Thank you guys for your patience with that. I know I, if it were up to me, I would have like every wedding behind the scenes, like you guys all over my shoulder and we could just like pause and talk about why I'm shooting the way I'm shooting. Um, because I think that would just be like hugely valuable to all of you. Um, let's see, Landry said, link to the Facebook group, please. Um, it doesn't exist yet. <laughs> We just decided like literally three minutes ago that it's gonna happen, but you guys are all invited. You're all gonna be welcome. Be sure to subscribe, get on the mailing list, like my email list. If you go to my website, you can get on it. If you go to my Instagram, it's in my link. Um, and I'm pretty sure most of you are on it. So be on that list and I will make sure that you guys know the second that Facebook group comes out um, so that you guys, yeah, I love the count. Like we have four members now. So excited. Do I count as a member? Like, or does that not count? Because then we're at five, maybe. This is exciting. Okay, Landry says, your content is by far the most inspiring on YouTube. Great job. Thank you so much. That's like a huge compliment. Like, I don't, I don't think that's true, but thank you so, so much because um, I work hard to bring you guys like free, helpful, amazing content because I think that when I first started, it was really hard to find this stuff. I mean, this is like years and years and years later, and I'm thinking like, we're still here, we're still, you know, there's still not great education for wedding photographers. So that's like my passion project on the side. So like besides photographing amazing, beautiful weddings and love stories, I'm trying to bring you guys like fantastic education. Um, and it's totally taken off. I don't know if you guys know this, but this is like a project that just started for me. I just started making YouTube videos and sending out newsletters and um, thinking about education very seriously in like January, January, February, like this year. So thank you guys so much for coming along on this journey because if none of you tuned in, it'd be super lame. Like I would just be in my room talking to myself and I think that's like really sad. Um, so you guys are awesome and like every single number, like I think about this all the time, but every single subscriber is like a person like watching and said like subscribe like I want to hear from you again and I I totally respect that and I think that's like a big deal and a big responsibility so I'm trying to like constantly top it and get amazing stuff um, out for you guys so that I can keep keep it up all right Landry says um, it is. I have been watching several channels. Yours is straight and to the point and full of tips and advice. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching and for saying that. Um, thank you. I'm sure you've like shared and liked my videos and I can't thank you guys enough for like getting the word out about this new channel, about what I'm doing and how like I'm just trying to bring like the most actionable, like get rid of all the BS, get rid of all the fluff and talk about like what it is to run a wedding photography business because it's not fluff. <laughs> it's real life and real life is complicated. So I think that, you know, the sooner we can just like embrace that, the sooner we're actually going to like raise this whole industry up together and have way more full time, thriving, profitable photographers. And that's, that's all I really want in the world. That would just make my day. Okay. Arvine said, Joy Michelle photography. Is this your Facebook page? Uh, I have a Facebook page. Yes. Yes. Joy Michelle Photography is my Facebook page. Um, so f 
for Facebook group, I don't know what I would call it. We'll see. What, what do you guys think it should be called? I think it should be something totally different. I think it should be like a community page where we're like learning and growing and um, doing like image reviews and critiques and live streams and just really like learning and growing together. So I think it should be less of like my portfolio and more of us talking. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions for um, like Facebook group titles, let me know. The JMP tribe, I like it. I like that a lot. We can use that, that could be a good hashtag too. It's short, it's to the point. That would be so cool. Man, you guys have such good ideas. I don't know what I did before YouTube. That's so funny. Okay, so Cherith, you were thinking the exact same thing. So that would be really, really cool, for sure. We'll, we're gonna like have to do some sort of poll and see what people think. Joy's Fine Art Studio, hashtag JMP Tribe, love it. Very cool, very, very cool. All right guys, so I'm gonna hop off soon, but if you have any last minute questions, things you wanted to ask me, video suggestions, um, everyone's saying they love the JMP Tribe, that's really cool, Landry even said that, awesome. So maybe, maybe I have to call it that, I don't know. Maybe I'll call like the JMP Tribe, like that could be the mailing list, because that's already exclusive content. I don't know. It's good ideas. Very good ideas. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you liked this video, if you get value out of my channel, please give it a thumbs up. Again, I'm going to be giving away some amazing stuff. Some of my favorite books, some of my favorite like goal setting software and um, systems. And I'm going to be giving away like a ton of stuff when I reach 5k subscribers. So if you guys want to help me get there, I would be so, so thankful. Um, so please share my channel, share my like whatever video I've ever made that it's like your favorite video, share it. Um, and bring some value to someone else's life. Help me get to 5K and I will be making some big content at 5K. All right, we have a suggestion here. A suggestion for a new video. Different issues a photographer can go through during a wedding or mistakes to avoid running a business. Yeah, I'm screenshotting that because that's like gold. That is so true. And especially since I'm right in the middle of wedding season right now, I am like encountering it like crazy. So. I think that's a good idea. So just issues that are common, mistakes that are common. Um, I love it. I'm gonna do that, Landry, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna put it in my YouTube notebook because I actually have like a whole notebook just for YouTube. Um, all right guys, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Um, and I don't wanna take any more of your time. So I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna leave this replay up for probably like 24 hours and then it's going to be exclusive to my mailing list. So if you guys hung out with me today, I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday, I think it is. And I will see you guys next time, bye.